So, hi, welcome back. How are you guys doing? <laughs> Is he tired of my shit? <laughs> I'm sorry, man. I'm sorry. Oh. Lasting weeks now. <laughs> right, yeah, yeah. Um. I mean, this day has been lasting weeks for us. Uh, but yeah, it's also an appropriate <laughs> reaction for him to be properly tired. Um. Of, of you know everything that's going on oh okay I yeah no the I sound no i song. i had still no, muted no. you guys i forgot that that's a separate button to uh no, okay yeah but turn off is indeed really tired <laughs> he just just wants you know perhaps a bedroom for himself <laughs> <laughs> maybe yeah i get you no but... drinking no party <laughs> just sleeping yeah, I mean, it, it really depends on, but I could also imagine that with all the shocks and the the things that they've had to endure recently, I could very much imagine that the, the party just chooses to um, to kind of take a sabbatical until the equinical and, like, chill out, relax, get their faculties back and just, you know, yeah, get the lay of the land instead of continuing to push on because... That's... Sure, Kevin. Sure, because we don't have a list full of things to do before the equinical. You don't have a list full of things that have to be done before the equinical. I'm pretty sure we do. Oh yeah. Uh, so jazz. We actually don't. Name one. You have a list full of things that you want to do, but you know, uh, there is room. You, you can, you know, you know, you can give yourself room as well. Some things you can push or choose to do differently. And honestly, doing things before the equinical would just be, you know, way more efficient. But, yeah. uh, but maybe I mean, we don't want how efficiency much? anymore. I mean, uh, John Jock just basically did algorithms with his sorcery points and spell slots and shit. That must uh, give him an exhaustion point. That there, some magical, powerful forces are. <laughs> Are with JJ right now. <laughs> Maybe before the been we can just go get drunk. We still have those those white flower things. <laughs> right? Oh man. Yeah. I wanna test to see if if suddenly I'll have magic if I take those flowers. I would also need to Go ahead, Kevin. I was just going to say, definitely start doing the drugs that you confiscated from the criminals without, <laughs> you know. I mean, that always leads to a fun time. <laughs> You'll have a fun time. Um, I mean, you can't prefer drugs without the involvement of criminals, so. Well, I mean, where you, where no. you live, maybe, but, you know. You know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to legalize drugs, and we're so happy about it. <laughs> But yeah. Wait, maybe so we should, maybe we should try the that flower right before the equinical. Maybe yeah. we should try the flower now if it needs extra we... firepower. Why well, not? So then we would be super high doing the equinical if we take the flower right before it. Please no. <laughs> <laughs> so just for reference for everybody watching, uh, they recently have discovered that there's a new drug on the streets, which comes from a flower called Night Sail or Mystrium, and the drug is called the same thing. Um, and it seems to uh, be giving people minor magical powers, or major ones, depending on um, depending on how much of it you consume. And they have recently acquired a uh, rather large portion of them from the dead bodies that they've just put outside. They were living at some point. <laughs> yeah. That is true. Then they attacked us. <laughs> And they learned a valuable life lesson. About their not last teaching one us a lesson. Exactly. A Never lesson. try to teach the Ashen Herds a lesson. Wait, yeah. Kevin, what did you say the, the name was? Wasn't it Sundrop? 
Sun Drop, Mistream, or Night Sail. <laughs> All okay, three okay. are uh, appropriate. As many names as petals. <laughs> Exploding them, yeah. So, uh, it seems that everyone's back. Welcome back, Carlos. Um, hey. And uh, I would say then, let me move Streamlabs, Streamlabs back up here. And I have you guys again. And we return to the Ashen Hearts in the dead of night. A cold winter blanket outside. The wind howling and something else as well. And Kor's hound lies dead. I'm sorry, by the way, Carlos, but you know, you said it to patrol. I was like, <laughs> that's uh, that was unfortunate. Yeah. <laughs> um, it but... woofed out of existence. Uh, <laughs> I hate you. Sacrifice. <laughs> nice. Um, but with uh, with the hound dead, and you know, some of the beasts or creatures grew some power on display. Tarnok has decided to retreat to the house and um, placed a strange, uh, inert, mechanical clockwork, you know, creature maybe this size, um, on the table before Jean-Jacques, who went to investigate. So let's pick it up there. Um, Jean-Jacques, would you like to roll a an investigation check? Let's let's start with that. I would in a moment, but I do also, okay. like, want to take a moment where Jean-Jacques... Just to, to, you know, explain to the rest that are watching today what the image of Jean Jack is, which he is in resplendent archmage robes, but also absolutely covered in blood. Because mm -hmm. at no point did he had a minute to actually clean himself up and, and Turnock had previously showered him in the blood of their enemies. So um, I think he just kind of like puts the clockwork thing in front of himself and then does that thing where you put your hands on the table like super wide. Okay. Puts his head down for a minute and just goes like, okay, All right, you can do this. All right. And then he'll open his eyes and go to, to bed. But he's, he's definitely, he's, he's at his limit, I think. And what Bruno said about exhaustion, I think is... I think everyone's it's, it's, starting to push their limits pretty hard here. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, right. Don't stop me, uh, uh, While he's, you know, uh, going to investigate, I'm, I'm just sitting there, and I have my eyes closed, you know? I, I'm, I'm literally resting like this. Okay. And I just go... It fell off the thing, and it jumped on me, jumped me, and uh, it briefly attached to my shoulder and then I, I checked the wound is there a wound or no um not on the shoulder it it was further back on like, oh, the back like, like yeah. actually near the spine okay. um you'd have to probably remove your your chest plate to actually see uh closer unless somebody was going to expect inspect it with maybe a candle or a dancing light then you could have a chance of viewing what's um what's there what yeah, happened but... to the second one Wasn't the second, there second one, one was like smacked away and disappeared hasn't been seen since good rogue mm. mechanical bug 19 on the 19 check. okay you find a disturbing similarity in the individual pieces within to what you've seen previously inside of the golden watch that you carry or that barnett carries in this case um the the make of it is clearly it's obviously a different item but it is it has a similar uh, build up, but it's it, especially with a 19 investigation, you do deduce after maybe three or four minutes of inspecting it and kind of tearing it some parts apart a little bit. You find that it is put together much more clumsily and less elegantly than the stopwatch was. Like someone had tried to imitate a similar design, um, like like an apprentice to a master. Outside of that, of words. <clears throat> outside of that, you find that um, it has a single, like little injection mechanism, and there's a vial attached to it, which has a liquid in it, which is currently in this one empty. Mm. Can I detach it and kind of try to deduce what was inside the? Um, I would say that would probably be. Hmm. That would be a straight intelligence check in this case. Okay. Unless you are proficient with alchemical tools of any kind. I'm proficient in thieves' tools. 
Mm, you can't steal the smell, but uh, <laughs> no, I meant for for detaching it. But okay. oh no, no, that 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 part is doable. I meant more like in terms of determining um, what what the effect is and and what it is in general. Ten, ten, a measly ten. The only thing that you can deduce is that it it literally it smells cold. It smells cold. Yeah. Okay. Oh. I do turn to Jean Jacques. Like, did you find out anything? Did you find out about anything? Well, um, it is definitely inspired by the work of our. Kind of look around. Mm -hmm. Is there anybody else in the living room except us? No. No one's come out. <clears throat> yeah, um, it's it's definitely inspired by the work of our our good friend. The apple farmer. <laughs> oh God, is this starting again? <laughs> <laughs> never, never lose that. <clears throat> um, but it does seem to be um, cruder, less uh, original. This is a, a a copy or or somebody working off of <clears throat> designs that they didn't really understand fully. I, I'm not entirely sure. The other thing is there's this file that I would assume contained some form of poison or concoction meant to uh, I don't know, maybe incapacitate you and leave you as prey for the beast. Uh, this is just assumption. But, it my wouldn't, but it stung me. It, it, it wouldn't make sense. I, but the vial is empty, so my Yes, um, yes, because it attached to my, it yeah. attached to my back. That's why it's yeah. empty. Yeah. It's in me. What the fuck is this, guys? This wasn't Appy uh, an apprentice of the clockmaker or something? Couldn't this? Could this be Appy? Why he would he? He wanted to mind his own business. Yeah. Wait, could I it be the Scarlet this... Rose? Because you know that he's looking for this, right? And maybe he's investigating the clockmaker's work. I mean, the apple farmer work <laughs> apple farmer were they with us did you just say that they were not yeah argyle said it's something different no no uh, i'm literally oh. asking like weren't me and jean jacques alone weren't, wasn't that a thing no no i was right behind no, you no, you guys were all in the living room oh, oh, the living okay room. Not none like... of the guests were with us yeah yeah uh can some somebody please check i is it different? How how's the wound look like? like yeah, I'll go and inspect. Okay, yeah, I'll go and inspect the wound. So you end up having to probably conjure one of your dancing lights in yep. order to, to really get a look. And you you know it, it becomes this awkward thing. Maybe you even have to call over Tani or Core to you know wrench back the armor a bit to get a better look. Uh, but you indeed see like in the back, just where where the spine starts to you know starts to move up into the neck. Um, there's a small injection mark. And um, there's no other sign that it's, you know, infected or poisoned or anything. It's just a little straight-up injection. Okay. You guys hear a growl? Is it back? Oh. Did we listen to something? I, I heard I don't something. Know. I don't know. I forgot to unmute it. Was there a growl? Yeah, there was a, a oh large growl. Oh, my God, man. <laughs> I, I think that this, this might be like... Um, a hunting method, right? Like it has these things on it as parasites or something. They drop off of it, attack you, incapacitate you, and then you get eaten. Yep, there is a growl yeah. outside. Yeah, it's getting closer again. Um, well, no, I've seen the thing. It is. It is not a. It is not a wolf. It completely destroyed uh, Cora's mastiff and. I don't know what it's going to do to me if I'm next to it, having this thing injected on me. So I prefer to not engage in combat with it this time, and I'll just stay right here. And I lean back, and I go, I go take the position that I was before, and I just stay there. Okay. The kitchen is, is made out of stone. There's only one entrance, so it is easily defensible. I propose that we... Bed down for the night. Take turn. 
being on watch and try to get maybe some rest. get there, there quicker. Growling is, is I don't like you it. You guys look around and those of you with higher passive perceptions, you did you you believe that the creature is currently near the front door. Wait a second, just a question quickly. It sounds closer. We don't though. know. We don't know who, where, where this. I mean, we don't know who, who, who this creature is coming, for. Right. We so, don't. isn't that maybe it's coming for the the apple itself? Do we need it? Should we just throw it away? No. No, definitely. I I, I wanted actually to ask you to. To take it for for study because I, I need to understand it better. Yeah, maybe you should take it right now. <laughs> well, you're talking about it. I'm I'm I, I'm I went to work. <laughs> take uh, it. I'm like, uh, it's good to have brave friends such as yourself, Barnack. Yep, I'm going to the kitchen though. <laughs> to bravely defend it. By the way, <laughs> I will bravely defend it. Yeah. So I'll put it around my neck and tuck it under the robe. Okay. Uh, Are you yeah. hearing that? Isn't that isn't there a new sound? Is that on the roof or something? It's a... something is scratching nearby. Um. Nearby where? At the front door? Near the front door. Mm-hmm. I will cast gust and blow the doors open. Okay. As you blow the doors open, suddenly there's a brief pause as the tension holds. And then you watch as two pale eyes blink into existence in this pool of darkness that slowly drifts into the room. You watch, mesmerized, door creaking nearby, not sure, as this thing is slowly approaching you. It enters the room and watches you closely, gurgling breath. Promising nothing good. What are you guys doing? I immediately cast Shield of Faith on the party. Well, it's on one target, I believe. Uh, all right, on one. Thought it was a party. Is it Shield of Faith like you place it and whoever's no. behind it is going no. to It no. surrounds the creature. Right? It's on a target and it increases the AC by two, I believe. Yeah. <laughs> so I'll, I'll place it on, on Nicola. Uh, on okay. Jack. Yeah, as I as I had the uh, as I just put on the the thing, I, I stared the creature down, mm -hmm. you know, standing up tall, confident, uh, air quotes, and in my mind I just say, "This is offensive to yourself, or in any way an aberration of your image and power." I invite you to help if you can. I will continue to work towards your goals as much as I can. Speaking to. Make a religion check. As all of you yeah, stare down with the monster, you know, yeah. there's a brief moment of pause as everyone is silent. John Jock begins to think and turn off you. What do you do? Uh, oh, yes. Uh, nothing. I, I, I'm still in the same position. My eyes are closed, yeah. but I have my hands on my sword. That's okay. the only thing. I have my right hand, right? Like crossed. But the right hand on the sheet. Okay. I already mind. Thirteen. Okay. Um I'll crouch down in a fighting stance, ready to spring if okay. that creature moves. As you all kind of take your comet positions, Jean Jacques focusing his attention briefly elsewhere. You just hear a heartbeat, ticking, ticking, ticking. But John Jacques, you specifically hear four beats of the clock. Tick, 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 tick. And that's the only response that you get. Four beats of the clock. All right, I <laughs> look towards the beast, <laughs> and I say. Um, we have no quarrel with you or whomever your master is. Be away with yourself, or otherwise we will be forced to defend ourselves. The black 
shadow slides forward just a little bit. The eyes now intently trained on who has the the the, the item, the golden watch. Uh, Jean Jacques. Jean Jacques, right. Then the eyes are very very intently trained on Jean Jacques as it approaches slowly, and you begin now to see emerging from the blackness just this this maw of indeed a werewolf like creature something transformed into something similar to a wolf but enormous horrible and the teeth bared in a permanent snarl it doesn't seem to be able to actually close its mouth some of the teeth uh removed and replaced with mechanical pieces and you watch as right next to one of the eyes you see just the glint of a single mechanical clockwork gear that's embedded in the flesh and kind of sticking out horribly and you think you can still see a bit of mucus maybe even blood that's just kind of congealed around the edge and it moves forward to slowly approaching Jean-Jacques not seemingly not in an aggressive manner at the moment but it is still inching forward centimeter by centimeter towards the man with the golden pocket watch I, I stepped right beside careful... Jacques in the meantime, sir. Yeah. I put my hand on Tani's shoulder, like, you know, <laughs> and squeeze, so she knows that I'm super thankful for that. <laughs> and then, trying to pull her with myself, I take a careful step, step back. Okay. As you do, the creature stops. It stops moving forward altogether. And it just kind of observes for a moment. You see the head tilt in that curious way that, that maybe almost actually becomes um, a dog-like creature. But it continues to breathe in deeply. To search for something almost. As if it's trying to gauge and probe something out of you that you have no way to provide. I will cast Message. I'm just uh, actually see if I. Sorry, I'm really tired. Here's the message. Um. Yeah, no, it doesn't. If it cannot speak. Well, you don't know if it cannot speak. Yeah, true. I will cast message, I guess. So that way, only it can hear me. Okay. Um. And I will, I will say, um, I look to aid the same patron. Okay. Do not. Yeah. Do you? So the, here's a complicated question. Do you think anything at it as you communicate these words? Any imagery that comes into your mind as you do so? I think of the. I think of the clock itself, mm -hmm. and um, I think the four, like I tried to impart it clicking four times, okay. um, and kind of think of it like peace, <laughs> or like calm. Okay. As you do so, it moves closer again, just a little bit, maybe half a foot for it and it just begins to growl in a low voice and you get a message back but there are no words there are only images and you see and you hear also the, the constant kind of a similar ticking but more consistent the ticking of machinery just constantly tick, 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 and you know metal clanking against each other and you see people coming in and out of a room of some kind complete stone walls around it you see chains near it and blood splattered across the walls, a corpse in the corner and just pure, pure rage communicated back to you but it still yeah. inches forward rather than jumping yeah. really don't want to give the clock to it. Like, not at all. So I'll, I'll kind of... 
<sighs> Fuck it. I'll take a step forward. Okay. It. And I will try to look at its eyes intently. I'll cast message again. Mm -hmm. And I will imagine that same room, but with myself and the group coming in, killing those people, and freeing it from what I perceive to be a, an experimental chamber. But I can also say is um, not that master. That is a perversion. I serve the true clockmaker. Not serve. I I aid the true clockmaker. Okay. Um, make an arcana check. As you, you know, in, instead of just generally accidentally communicating something alongside, actively <laughs> attempt to um, bring something else to it. Fifteen. Okay. Um, the creature pauses again. And those eyes, all of you now, there, there is this strange phenomenon that you can tell when a creature's eyes are intelligent. And you become more and more aware that this creature's eyes are highly intelligent. There is something in there that is more than beast or monster that is watching this but unable to do anything. That's okay. I'll fix it. Um, uh, but this, this creature observing from almost behind bars, watching you as its mouth continues to snarl permanently, a low growl is escaping it, but those eyes are almost pleading, begging for something. And it inches just a little bit closer since you had also stepped forward. Yeah. And it, the head fully emerges from the dark cloud. It doesn't open its mouth, but it starts to get within, let's say, the half meter mark of you. Mm -hmm. And you can see that the nose is kind of sniffing. It's attempting to locate. And you have a very good idea of what it's attempting to, to find on your person. What do you do? I will take the timepiece out. Okay. Just see how it reacts. Okay. Interesting. It will... Um, hmm. It will immediately focus on it. And it draws nearer to it. And it starts to just sniff the air. Maybe 15 centimeters from your, from your hand. And it's just kind of sniffing. Those enormous teeth now that you see are... Like one tooth is larger than your finger. Yeah. And it's just like... <sighs> trying, trying, trying. It still growls. Just it, it seems to have almost a permanent growl running in the back of its throat. But you see that the ears have kind of flattened a little bit. And you get a better look at it as well. You see that there's more mechanical wiring and bolts and cogs embedded in the flesh that run across its entire body from what you can tell. Some larger, you know, almost wheel sized, some very small, but all of them incredibly painful looking as they've literally been seared into the flesh and simply been left to fester almost as an open wound covered only by something that doesn't belong there. It continues to sniff the item and after about 30 seconds or so of this, it slinks back, stepping back about a meter, looking at each of you, and then it begins to disappear into the dark black cloud, and you get the impression it's turning around and beginning to move away. Anything you guys do at this point? I'll do nothing more. Okay. I take an arrow. No, I don't. I don't. <laughs> I kill it. Where are you going? <laughs> Come back here. I immediately kill it. <laughs> okay. So, as you guys watch, perhaps 
partially frozen in, in worry or fear, the creature departs through the door. And you hear briefly another growl. Maybe a communication of some kind, you're not sure. Before that black cloud of darkness that even your dark vision couldn't pierce, whoosh, leaps into the air beyond the house and disappears. Okay. I have I have a theory. Um, of, like it obviously didn't seem to actually be looking for like it didn't want the the apple. <laughs> so uh, uh, the, mo the 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 point is moot now. I think we can yeah. call it the bad piece at this point. Yeah, right. Like you did it. It, it wasn't actually. I don't think it was actually looking for the timepiece itself. Maybe it thought it's looking for the clockmaker, and he and the, and and he could f sense the timepiece, mm. and that's why it came here. Yeah, it's possible. I think that it came for, and I'm still in the same position, by the way. I think it came for the timepiece, but due to the recent events, our timepiece does not hold the same power it once did. So it rendered it useless. Um, mm. Perhaps they know they knew it's not about sensing it, but they knew it was in our possession. And after assessing it, found out it was useless. Yeah, Could doesn't be. feel like it. This creature came from her directly. Yeah, because the 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 clock it feels like a corrupted version of what the clockmaker does. So I don't think it's it's directly from the clockmaker. I don't know. I no, think I it agree. wanted to. I I think what I honestly think is that uh, yeah, uh, they went for uh, something that it's not within our possession anymore. It's been said before but... that it, these are not unique to us. There are other <laughs> type pieces such as this one. Guys. That that raises a question. Until this moment, I thought this was Appy's doing. It looked like, well, as you said, Jean-Jacques, an apprentice. But Appy knows that what, what our timepiece, what happened to it. He knows all the situation. Uh, I, I agree with most of what was said, but I do not think that the timepiece is worthless because it stopped working. Oh, no, 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 not worthless. I, but yeah, yeah. but I, I think that if somebody who could still have the favor of the clockmaker could still make it work, like I, I believe that if a devotee were to pick the clock piece, the, 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 the clock up, that it would start again. But maybe i do not believe whatever her motives are that the clockmaker approves of such and i kind of <laughs> motion towards where the beast went experimentation i think yeah, that, that is seem... why appy was cast out yeah, it doesn't seem like clockmaker's style yeah so mm -hmm. maybe turnock is still right they were looking for a working one so that they could do something with it. Or they were looking for somebody. No, it wouldn't make any sense. It didn't react to us at all. It's... Could it well... have been Scarlet Rose or someone different? Sorry, Barnack. No, no, no. The, the important thing is that we don't know. We it's... know that, that Scarlet Rose, well, at least... Those guys in the other room didn't know what it was. Yes, they were scared this shitless. Is, this is related to the scary rose. I don't think so. Yeah. So this is our... Could this be the Aboleth? No. <clears throat> no. It's, it's, I do it's think it could be... the clockmaker, right? So... I... Pax didn't say he would be in doing the same thing. He said they were enemies. I don't think he would. He has his own power. It doesn't make any sense to appropriate that of another. He wouldn't make mechanical way. things. 
What time is okay. it? Um, at this point, probably 5 a.m. And a quick thank you to Saving Throws HQ for the raid. Thank you, guys. Welcome, welcome. They've uh, just recovered from uh, an encounter with a mysterious beast in the night, which uh, thankfully didn't eat anyone, which is helpful. Um, and now are speculating. And uh, Turnock, it is a, indeed about 5 a.m. It is, it is not quite close to dawn yet, but you're not too far off. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it's winter, right? So yeah, so it's coming up a bit later. Uh. Turnock, and you're feel are you feeling anything different with your? I'm worried about whatever was injected. Am I? To your back? No. Uh, after the the cold sensation left. Following the mm -hmm. attack from the the clockwork creature, um, nothing else feels like it has affected you. No, I'm I'm fine. I'm just <laughs> at this time right now. <laughs> we were supposed to be leaving according to our plans yesterday. I think I, I I think we should call it off. At least for the time and. Uh, Take those, take uh, Lord Fennec and Rhaenyra for uh, a safe place. I don't know where, but they have friends in higher places. So uh, somewhere that's not here, uh, we should uh, deal with the three bandits, probably take them to the police or, you know, whatever's the uh, adequate fate and then lay down a bit this time for a, for a while it's been almost 30 hours since we got rest the, the last time I, I'm tired I it's still in the same position mm -hmm. right? yeah I understand <sighs> well we won't guess anything here standing here so you're right we should get everyone to safety at least that um yeah i mean it's not imperative that we go out looking for elena's husband to that or today barnack does a 14 hit your armor class no as you're talking you suddenly feel a dagger trying to pierce through your armor and you hear a, a slightly high-pitched grunt and looking around all of you see Remy currently trying to jam a dagger into Barnack's back uh, uh, I'll slowly turn around okay he's gonna try again he's going to try again yep no, do I get to? Yeah, well, I don't get to hit him first. Well, you you, you had a sort of slow reaction, right? So I'm getting yeah, the impression yeah, I was, like, huh? Yeah, 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 that's, yeah, exactly. <laughs> you guys are all kind of stunned, maybe for a moment, and and he goes again, and he goes again to try to stab you. This time he reaches up actually, and he tries to jam it into the side of your face. Um, that hits. Yep. Yeah, so you suddenly like as you're surprised, and you try to brush it off as maybe a stupid joke or or something. He kind of you see just this this wicked grin, but his eyes are distant. He's not quite there, and he just jams the the same dagger up into the side of your of your throat. It does like you catch it just at the last minute, so it doesn't fully pierce, but you definitely feel <clears throat> suddenly. And before, you guys all realize the danger. Before that happened, would I have been able to see the dagger? Uh, you mean as he's attacking, or? Yes. Uh, I would say so. Yeah. Was it already bloody? <laughs> Make a, I guess that would be disadvantage perception because it's still dark and you're, you know, adjusting okay. to the situation. Yeah. So let's see. Uh... Perception, right? Mm hmm. I don't remember if I have the perception. I, I think I do. Okay. Well, not that bad. 16 in total plus 5. Okay. Yeah, I mean, in total, 16. No, his dagger was not bloodied, but it is very much now as it is sticking out of the no, side it of is. your neck. Yep. And yep. you're trying, like you're pushing it away. And all of you, what do you do as you see? Uh, Remy? I, I, I run, run towards closer. Remy, and I'm going to kick him as hard <laughs> as I can. <laughs> Just to 
imagine the size difference? Sorry. Giant white dragon board. Tiny halfling rogue. Um, make an attack roll. Like, or just roll a straight up uh, strength d20 roll. Can, can you roll an athletics check for me as well? Nine. Okay. Ooh. So, uh, like, you, you, you kick him, but you actually, like, he managed to kind of absorb the blow a little bit. So you do deal, how much uh, is your strength? Eighteen. So f I rolled an eighteen. In yeah, 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 so uh, one d4, oh, sorry, no, one plus uh, four, so you do five points of bludgeoning damage as you kick Remy uh, sideways. And as you do so, you notice Turnok sitting on the back of his neck is a little clockwork creature with a needle sticking into his back still. Okay. Uh, so, well, I'm going to attack again. I used the... the yeah. Uh, yeah, but I'm going to aim for the thing. Okay. Uh, that will like, be a more difficult we, hit. Uh, go ahead yeah. and try. Yeah, yeah. 15. So as you as you aim for 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 the thing, um, Remy in his you know he's dexterous he's small you actually have to kind of lean forward and down to to even get at him. Um, he just ducks underneath your hands. You can see him flip the dagger around so he can kind of defend himself with it. Um, swaps it to the other hand and then pulls out a short sword as well. Um, so that is your turn, Turnock. Um, what's the rest of you doing? I'll go grab I'll... Barnack. Okay. <laughs> Before you do, I, I'm going to... Well, Remy is not my friend. He just tried to kill me. <laughs> yes. And, yeah, at that moment, I would like to... Um, well, cut him with my cutlass. Okay. So, one hand on the neck, and the other one just... Woof, immediately start cutting. Probably at the same time as Kor it starts to kind of grab you by the shoulders and pulling you back. You just take a huge swing and another one, if you want to. Uh, for your two attacks, go ahead and make attacks with your cutlass. Uh, normal, no fighting and no sharpshooter. Just a second. There it is. A seven. No, the first one, he yeah. ducks under. You just cut off a bit of his hair. Um, the second one does hit. Go ahead and roll damage. Yep. With a 19. No sharpshooter. Uh, no sharp I don't know why it's. Okay. Yeah, I don't know why I. Oh, for damage, I didn't turn it off. That's fine. Yeah. Um. So, as this, the 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 cutlass comes out, the first one he ducks under. The second swing, as you're being pulled away by Core, um, and he's cut, literally forcing you away from the dangerous situation. Um, you cut Remy like right across the face, actually close to an existing star a scar that he has. So the bleeding is uh is less, but it's still a horrendous face and like part of the neck and and down the chest. Uh, horrendous wound that you've inflicted there. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll keep wailing even though I'm like being pulled away. And... <laughs> That's one to one, you motherfucker. I'm going to cut you open again. Okay, okay. Well, I'll still the clockwork? Yeah, yeah, yeah all just... of you become aware of the clockwork piece at this point. Yeah. I'll, I'll just yell out, now, come the fuck down, everybody. Just restrain him. He has that thing on the back of his neck. Barney, you don't have to kill my friend. Jesus. Look at what he friend. did. You're gonna be fine. <laughs> that was just because you were drunk in the tavern for fucking Christ. All Did right. somebody grab him? <laughs> Alright, I will say, um, you know, between all of you, the only element that he ever had in his favor was surprise. Um, so now that all of you are focused on him, um, he's not the most skilled fighter. You managed probably I would say Tani in this case, since since Kor is, is currently restraining Barnak um, and trying to help him. Um, between between Tani and um, Tornok. You manage to grab him and just, you know, hold him in place. And um, how do you proceed? Do you want to do anything about the thing on his neck right away? Yeah, I'll try and see if I, if there's like a, a... Is it like fully embedded or is it just latched on? No, it's a safe it's way like a me? little... It's like an actual little insect um, that, that has just sat on his back and it just has a little needle going straight into his spine. Like a tick. Yeah. Like yeah. Like I'll that, I'll yeah. try and carefully remove it. Okay. Um do you want to make a medicine check to see if you can yeah. do it without damaging anything? Yeah, I'd like to see All if right. I don't break my friend's spine. Oh Jesus. Eight. Eight. Okay. Um 
as you start pulling it out, that needle is deeper than you expected. You realize that the needle is capable of extending from within itself. Um, mm-hmm. And as you pull it out, he just starts screaming at the top of his lungs as he be- begins to become aware again of what's happening. But after about six to seven seconds or so, you've got the whole thing out in your hands and it immediately goes limp and inert. The needle's still sticking out, but it stops moving, stops struggling. And um, Remy just like goes hoarse and stops yelling at least, but you can definitely hear him just... And he's still being held up and restrained, right? So he's like, he's trying to reach for his neck, but he can't. Um, can you, can you put him down? What the hell happened? What's going on? Did we kill the beast? Did you? Well, did you kill the beast? And did I watch? No, you were. I can't look at the thing. I. Have, you were possessed by this thing. What? Do, do you not you tried to kill us, you weak-minded halfling? How's that my fault? Well, do, do you you don't remember anything? No, I was. Yeah, the bug really got you on the cheek as well. <laughs> like a deception check. Oh man. A plus zero, of course. Nine. Well, then my answer is nine. Um, <laughs> nine. <laughs> no, he he just glares at you, Barnack, and he looks over. His, he, he tries to look around, but of course it hurts to move his head too much, and he says, "No, I." Okay, don't be mad at me, but I kind of snuck out. Because I didn't want to be in the house with that thing. And I was... I was running away. And then it all went darker than it already was. And that's... That's the last I remember. It had nothing to do with you, um... Obviously knowing the folks who attacked us tonight and them leaving you alone? What are you talking about? Kind of just stare at him. Okay. He just stares right back. Very indignant. And in pain. Very clearly. Um, But why did you go out? Why didn't you stay in the kitchen? You normally hide. Why go out? I didn't... Towards the growling sounds. Not not towards. It was in the house at that point. Didn't you? I I was so sure you would hear me. And I I thought the creature would hear me. But I, I snuck by when it was like in here and staring at you guys. Figured better further away than sitting in a kitchen with no escape. I don't want to die. You know, Remy, I really wanted to be there for you because we go way back, but I can't keep putting my friends at risk. Look, man, what about you? Oh, I yeah, asked shit. you for protection and this shit occurs? This has nothing to do with me. It's more dangerous yeah. for me to hang with you than try to survive on my own, as far as I can tell. Nice friendship, that. And I'm even paying you for protection. I'm not protected. Well, you were attacked right when we met up the first time, so that's... Yeah, that's you know, what I'm paying you for. Evidently not true. But also, you're not paying me for ignoring the fact that you are in some way in cahoots with the Scarlet What Rose, are you talking which is about? not what you were talking about previously. What are you talking about? Kor saw you say something to one of the thugs and that they immediately left you alone as they were going to attack you. Yeah, so you I told either them tell I'm me not what the with fuck... you guys. Right, and in the middle of battle, he just up and left you and see left me, you alone. Do you think he's scared of me? No one's scared of me. Listen, Remy. Like, I, I know that I can't tell whether or not you're lying because we both learned how to lie at the same time and we're too good at it so you either tell me what the fuck you said for real or you leave here tonight and we never speak again and i'm dead so you don't give me a bullshit answer remy burchard because i will burn all our bridges because one thing i don't appreciate is you giving me the same shit you give to everybody else he looks through the room. Very, very calculating. Almost dangerous, you would say. 
in the way that he observes all of you for a good 15 seconds of silence and you guys observe him back and what you see there is a man weighing his options he looks back towards the door he looks at the creature that someone's holding he looks back at you Jean-Jacques and he deliberates about you the most it seems can we talk privately and he looks you know very briefly at all the others and he means just you and him yeah we can he nods to the to the room nearby I'll go all right he follows we hear any weird sounds I'm coming in okay I don't like Jean-Jacques being alone with him right now he closes the door and he goes over um, probably to sit like on the on the couch <clears throat> straightens his clothes out and you know he's delaying he's taking as much time as possible to not say something before he looks up at you and he says you know I'd do anything to survive right I do you know I told you I'm working for the DeLucas yeah I'm betraying them It's a different world out here, Jean-Jacques. There's no living our life and not being in the good graces of the Scarlet Rose. I had no choice. I'm doing what I'm doing because I have to. I'm sorry I didn't tell you before, but I didn't need you to solve the mystery. I just needed you to keep me alive until I got out of town. I see. So you never intended on following through with your promise of introducing us to this? Oh, I did. I'm not betraying them from today to tomorrow. I'm just passing along information. I still work for them. It's just that I'm not going to be doing it for much longer. And then I'm going to, you know, move on. That's it. It's just nature of business around here. I'll still introduce you, still give you, you know, my stamp of approval, make sure that, you know, the old lady knows who you are and that you guys can work together. It's just I'm not going to be part of that cooperation. Hmm. I don't think you... He kind of starts to say something to, like, mm-hmm. you know, appeal to his good side or something, but then he stops and he's like... Um, what good side? Yeah. It's very unfortunate, my friend. I'm sorry, Jean-Jacques, but I knew... Well, I didn't know, but I got the impression that you're a different kind of man now. And, uh... I knew you'd have trouble with this part of the business. So I thought I'd save you from it. That's just the way it is. I'm still gonna pay you. Our agreement can still be exactly what it was. You don't need to save me. Just keep me alive until I get out of town. I got the deal on Wednesday. That's two days. It's good money for little work. These dangers are not mine. Aside from what happened in the park, it should be a cakewalk. You can up the price a little bit if that's what you want. But for old time's sake... Do you know who he is? Who what is? You know. Oh, this is me DM not catching yeah, Scarlet on. Scarlet Rose. Okay. Um, he goes, uh, no, no. I work for one of the other gangs. But I can tell you that these petals, they're not your average people anymore. They made some kind of other deal, if you catch my drift. So be careful with those. Okay? Mm-hmm. Might not want to get in their way at all. If you can avoid it. Yeah, well, I kind of like 
kind of like the world I live in, friend, so don't really have much of an option. That's your choice. I, Just don't do it while I'm here. Yeah. I'm fine with um, going through with our deal, but we'll have to ask the rest whether or not they're willing to proceed without any further information, because if they knew what I know, there would be no deal. I know. So I'll present it to them as, you know, well, accepting it at what it is or not. Uh, you're the one with the silver tongue. So I'll, uh, I'll boost by 50% if you can keep them on. They're good at what they do. They're just, well, the Dragonborn one is really annoying, but they're good at what they do. Yeah. Best at not talking to him ever again, I think. Yeah, I wasn't planning to. All right. Should I wait here? Yeah. Okay. Do that best. So I'll make my way back to the group. All right. Let's see how. <clears throat> All right. So, um, cleared it up with Remy. Uh, has a pa passing acquaintance with this particular gang. But there are things that I cannot tell you about him or about his business. So I will ask you this instead. You can either agree to continue protecting him for the next two days for 50% more than was agree what was agreed upon, no questions asked, or we part ways now. Part ways uh, with Remy or us. with you? Him and us. <laughs> Not with me. He's my childhood friend and I understand that if you cannot go past not knowing what it is all about, but him and I have led different kinds of lives than you all, so it's simply not possible for me to tell you everything. If if you believe we're not hurting anyone or, or is it's it's fine that we should help him, I trust your judgment, John Jack, so I know you wouldn't suggest we do something that's... Yeah, if you're willing to part with like us, that. that means it's an important thing. And um, Will he still be delivering on his promise? Yes, all the terms of our deal remain the same, except we get 50% more in terms of a reward. Now, whether or not somebody gets hurt, Somebody always gets hurt. So, um, Bart next around. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of like laugh and nod. And say, yeah, especially with Barnack around. Don't do anything. What I can tell you, though, is that we can get something valuable out of the experience. And no matter what we do, doesn't change anything other than Remy doesn't get to hiding behind our skirts. By the way, Turnock is still silent, still in the same position. <laughs> he fell asleep? <laughs> no, no, he's not asleep. Okay. Well... Childhood friends are not easy to come by. And if you say that we should help him. He, he, he hasn't asked us to kill anyone. He only asked us for protection and protecting we can do. I don't see the reason not to do it. Except that he tried to, to freaking stab me. But I, yeah, I know, I know still. If you can convince him that he looks better now with that other scar, I mean. I can do that for sure. Everyone's always getting mind controlled and trying to kill Barnack. <laughs> <laughs> That's um... right, Core. Why, why the hell does it always happen to me? <laughs> I want to be mind controlled once. Actually, no, I don't. <laughs> that sounds weird. Yeah. Just, can, just... I can arrange that, Barnack. No, 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 no. Nope. 
We will not be crossing that line. We crossed a lot of lines, Jean-Jacques, I remember. That line, please don't. Okay. Yet. As I see that, you know, the, the, it had like a mood swing, like, you know, situation resolved kind of a mm -hmm. thing. I stand up. I uh, get really, really close, like uncomfortably close to Jean-Jacques, like face to face. I look up. <laughs> <laughs> and I say, you are too loyal to everybody. And at one point, your future will just get in your way because you have to choose. And I'm just wondering where your heart is, right? And uh, I'm, I'm not expecting an answer. I'm just, uh, I'm going to head back to the kitchen with the intent of picking up the uh, the bandits because we need okay. to get the situation sorted. Okay. Um, as, as you, sorry, is there more that happens? In the living room, or is everyone kind of resolved and okay with what the situation just, is? I'll just uh, uh, tell John Jack, but like just for the, for him to hear, like John Jack, I need to talk to you when we have a chance. It's important. Okay. Well, around. Like, yeah. Tar Tarnock, before you leave, you, did you did you already go, Tarnock? Or go? Like I'm I'm yeah, walking. Like, yeah, like I hold on, Tarnock. Just one thing that we already that you mentioned. I think it's important for all of us uh are we taking days off today's monday and i you know i suddenly i like snap out of it just a little bit <laughs> today's monday morning we were thinking about going to the island that's not going to happen there's the painting in the wall but that can be a venture that will take us more than two days so we may lose the equinical so for the rest of the day today i don't believe so it's yeah, and there's uh, the Delucas. Maybe after the Equinical? Uh, we can go this? to that hill place where Basil wants us to go. How, that could be our vacation. How about this? We sleep in. We're all tired. We're all on the edge. Tomorrow, so Monday afternoon, we can go and finish the Delucas. And that's it before... We the don't Basel. have a meeting arranged with them. That's the problem. We have a person that can do it and we can get him to do it probably hopefully right jean-jacques he tried to pierce me with a dagger it's not so much about remy wanting or not wanting it's about not spooking the delucas into thinking that remy's gonna arrange for them to be murdered type of thing um, you know no i don't but you understand that that's fine <laughs> It's like approaching a drunken dwarf with a glass of water in the middle of the night, right? They'll immediately smell something's wrong and punch you in the face. Completely understood now. Thank you, Jean-Jacques. I if, speak dwarf. He actually speaks if dwarvish. You want, <laughs> if you want to get work done tomorrow, I can guarantee you. And I, as I say tomorrow, I just correct myself today. There's plenty of work to be done. Uh, that, that's what I was going yeah. to ask. If we don't have any plans, tomorrow night we could go to the archive and I could read what I need to read from the freelancers. Tomorrow. It's just reading. It's nothing. No mission. Nothing else. It's just reading. I do have I some can. business to tend to on my own as well. Uh, I may need an afternoon, perhaps a bit more than that, but Perhaps we'll do that today then. Okay. Uh, and then I just uh, start walking back to the kitchen. All right. So you head into the kitchen. You find there one very alert footpad lady, a uh, boy who has cried himself to sleep, and um, Lady Rhaenyra currently having fallen asleep on top of her husband uh, as she was tending to him. From all the fear and anxiety, they, um, <clears throat> yeah, they, they seem to be sleeping, although, you know, Lord Fennec is probably still recovering from his head wound. Um, and that is how you find them. The footpad just looks up at you, Tarnock, 
Doesn't say a word as you as instructed, um, but just gives you a nod of acknowledgement. What do you want to do? Yeah, I um, I do. I uh, first of all, I beg, I wake up Lady Rhaenyra or okay. gently, if possible. I. Uh, mm -hmm. it's gonna... uh, oh, is is it gone? Yes, uh, for the time being, yes. We're still not sure what it is, but uh, it is safe for now, but I wouldn't believe uh, it would be safe for you to remain here. Uh, at least, let us fix things through. Uh, well, uh, there's been a lot of killings. We may need to uh, call the Black Hats uh, to, to, to hear. I don't know what types of questions they're going to ask. But they should ask these questions to us, as you and your husband deserve some rest. Uh, do you have a friend's house somewhere that you could go for you to spend the day today? She looks down at her husband and she looks back at you. She says, um, "No, not 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 necessarily. But can't we stay if if the black hats are coming? I would rather speak with them directly and let them know everything that happened." And if if the if the creature is gone, then I don't I don't see further threat to the house. <gasps> have you have you looked for the other for the other guards, the men we had who had posted outside? Have you checked what happened yes, to them? Sir. Well, uh, they're dead, right? Uh, they're they're dead, but dead. probably. Yeah. But you haven't seen like the ones that were near the gate ah, and stuff like ah, that. Okay. You know, the ones that were out cold, out, out in the cold. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, unfortunately, we did not have a chance have a chance to to actually look for them. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, but we didn't even even had time to breathe. Uh, so no, of, of course I understand. Um, really quickly, I want to say thank you. Um, Game mommy for uh, for the raid. Ten people. Hi everyone. Welcome. Hi everyone. Hello. Um, Welcome. They're just recovering from a very Hello. rough night in a, in a nobleman's estate and uh, trying it's, to figure it out. It's too far to say recovering from a rough night because it's still happening. Yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. Right. You're starting to recover from a rough night, and um, yeah. So she she kind of gets up for a moment, um, and she you see her kind of come to herself a bit. And she looks at you and she asserts the sort of, she's not bossy, but she's, you can tell she's used to being in charge in her own house. So she looks around, she says, um, all right, well then first things first, is everyone of your party okay? Are you all well and alive? Yes, a few wounds here and there, but yes, nothing that we were not able to recover. All right, and you'll need rest as well, correct? Oh, please, absolutely. All right. Then let's get the house at least closed off from the cold. I don't know what you'll do with these two, but can you please help me first get my husband into bed? Why are you saying sure. two all the time? The two prisoners? Then, what about the third one? Yeah, oh, Argyle, okay. right. He was in the in the main room. I kind of forgot about him a bit. Oh, okay. No, no, we, <laughs> no, we or no, you him. moved him. You moved him. You're right. No, no, we yeah. moved him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's, he's there. Sorry, he's then there. three. She would have said three. My apologies. Uh, it's just yeah. I saw the two on the map oh, okay, uh, okay. most easily. Um, but no, you're right. Three. So I, I assume you'll do something with these three. But please, my husband first. He he needs to rest, obviously. Yeah. And... Well, I I don't I don't need I, I don't need a test to to carry him. No, 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 absolutely <laughs> not. Even with the heavy blankets that have been draped across him, um, mm -hmm. you you manage to lift him pretty easily. Mm -hmm. And the only thing that she does is she kind of guides you out of the kitchen because it's quite a narrow exit. Um, so she kind of protects his head a little bit, and then when you're out, uh, she just says, uh, "Go ahead, I'll be right there. I'm just going to grab some food for all of you, and uh, and then I'll come." So Thank she so she busies much, herself, um, you know, grabbing some some stale bread from the previous day and and some general cheese and meat and you know the things that a nobleman's house typically has in uh, in storage and um, then she comes out and you know she just has it like on this large plate. Um, she's even tried to feed a little bit of bread to each of the prisoners, at least the ones that were were awake. Uh, so Argyle and the lady have both had a little bit of bread and a little bit of water. Uh, but she comes out with a large pitcher, several cups stacked, and just a, a spread of bread and meat and cheese uh, for all of you, which she places on the table. And then she goes on to the master bedroom, where she, uh, you know, after you've placed him down, she kind of checks him over, thanks you, and then just 
you know, ushers you out and uh, after securing her own bedroom at least and closes the door so she can uh, yeah. probably just collapse again and, and start resting. So um, I go to the kitchen once again mm -hmm. uh, and I go and I pick up the two footpads, not our guy. Our okay. guy stays there. I get the two of them and I bring them to the main living room. Mm -hmm. And I actually, I... Um, I divide my, my portion of food in three. I'm, I'm, I apologize. That's okay. It's okay. Uh, wait, it, it requires one second. <laughs> I know that feeling. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so I take my, my, my portion of food and I divide it in three equal pieces and uh, I offer it to, to both of them. And uh, I just say, so. Um, you are both aware that uh, you will be resurrected and you will go to uh, well, to the proper authorities to judge what's your fate, right? So you have two very, very varying reactions. First of all, when you offer the food, the young man immediately takes it and you can see it's still a bit of breadcrumbs from the food that, that um, Rhaenyra had given him previously. Um, and he just starts scarfing it down. You see a fearful look in his eyes as you tell him this. And he just tries to make himself as small as possible. Uh, the lady looks looks at you, declines the food and says, thank you, I've already had some. And when you point out that she's going to, to, to the proper authority, she just nods. I know. Is everybody in the room okay with this? She looks at the other one. He'll learn. I look to the guys. Well, us? Yeah. Do what you want with them. I mean, they'll be out in a matter of days, probably. Well, what will we do then? Isn't this your justice system of your republic? We could send them somewhere. The... No, we will not send them to the same place you keep sending <laughs> all the people. <laughs> she, uh, the, 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 the footpad, um, the, the more confident one interrupts. And she says, um, well, how quickly we get out really depends on what you do with Argyle. May I ask if you've decided? Uh, well, <laughs> would we... you mind if I tell you that the answer is we haven't and we don't know what we're going to do with him? Because I know, indeed, that his fate is way more sure than yours if we decide to send him to prison. Um, and that's because, and that's why I brought you here first, because I wanted you to, to have a bit of control over your fate, because you could, you could pick death if you want to. You saying we have a wish to make, a request of yours, of, of, to make of you. Well, try me. Kill our guy. Why would we kill Argyle? Because if you don't, he's going to be out in a day, and we're going to have to be out in two, and all of this starts again. I don't know about you guys, but I don't want to get my ass handed to me again. And I don't want to go back to the misers. It's not what it used to be. So if you kill Argyle, I go spend a happy year or two in a jail cell, and then I come out, and I find myself a different life. I, like, pull Jean-Jacques, like, clothes a bit. And I say, why not send them to, to where we can send them? I'm just going to look at him real close, and I say, like, let's, let's think about it, Barnett, right? You're sending a lot of people that you like over there, right? And then... You keep sending criminals. criminals, like people that are murderers and thieves. But these two, look at them. They're, they're pathetic. Is she the she the, the other yeah the the guy for sure. She she seems like she she's got her shit together. She seems to want to survive. She wants another life probably. But, yeah, and she. <laughs> bar, what what is to stop her from going to? that place 
than just robbing all those people <laughs> and making a life for herself somewhere else. Allow me to interject just for a second. The, at the same time that killing these people goes against your republic's law, letting them go anywhere else other than the authorities is also breaking the law. So if we're doing the things that we're doing because, oh, we don't want to go to jail, then we do it the right way. Otherwise, we kill all three of them. No, it's, there's a difference between murdering and not reporting a criminal. So. Yeah, there are. Let's see then. Let's see. Let's see. You have a problem with that? I can kill Argyle for you. Just no, cut it's... my bounds and tell him I got loose. Not a problem. I'm going away anyway. Either way, I disagree with Barnack. I think we should send him to prison. No question about it. I don't think we should be sending them on the boat anywhere. Yeah. Who the fuck and even knows if they'd want to go? It's just they can reform <laughs> themselves through the great prison system of the. The, 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 the boy comes again and immediately goes like, "I'll, I'll reform. I'll, I'll do it. I'll go wherever you want me to go. Yeah, Please, sure you, you, you can send me wherever you need me to." Kid, you bend over for the very next thug that comes across your way and start all over again. I would not. And he just looks at the at the at the lady, and she looks back at him, and she just kind of once does this, and he immediately. <laughs> <laughs> in case, please get this sorted fast. There's only two options here. The, the... What are we? Sorry, we're sending them to prison. What? Yeah, and let's remember, Cadence and Orion, the two, the first two people we sent, didn't actually go, and Orion ended up in a gang. Right. Yeah. <laughs> they didn't even go. See you yeah. <laughs> he ended up in a gang. <laughs> Darn it. So who oh. else did we send there? Who else did we you send to the crowd? Oh, the... Not Valera, yeah. but the other one that was... The redhead... The cultist. Yeah. Oh the yeah. Co what cultist? No, we didn't send the cultist. No, no, we, we didn't send, send the cult. No, 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 no. Well, right. We sent we sent the the one from Braxo's gang that we interrogated. Oh right, right, right. Oh yeah, yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. The confident redhead mm. person. Yes. Is that in your notes? Confident redhead. <laughs> the confident. Redhead. <laughs> no, I just remember <laughs> confident redhead is what I remember. Yeah, maybe she got to the Craig at least. Doesn't yeah, matter. Likely. So yeah, prison for these two. What about Argyle? You know my vote since the beginning. For that man. He's. What? The, the, the footpad that's been confident speaks up again and goes, I'm sorry, what's your process here? Do you just debate it to death until somebody gets bored and does something? Why don't you just take a vote and be done with it? I could get some sleep before I go to prison. I, I appreciate your, your confident attitude, but it is slightly grating on the nerves so i might just send you into fucking smithereens right now if you don't shut the fuck up just do it quick i'm really tired i oh no <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I like i move like he moves there's lightning in his hands and he like thrust him out he's like no <laughs> she just stands no. there arms behind bound behind her back and just looks at you bored yeah <laughs> I do approach her, then I put a hand on her head and I cast Shocking Grasp, just for, for good measure. She she grunts, you know, and like all the muscles seize up. Yeah, um, I cast it again. And she falls unconscious, because she didn't have any hit yeah. points left. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I stabilize her with my med kit and then drag her into the next room. Okay. Okay. Um, come back and just as they're coming, I just I hate nothing more than people who pretend that they're in control and captivity. It's just... <laughs> it's wrong, and they really need to learn how to behave. It's one of the first things that you really learn how to do. But, maybe, you know. <laughs> maybe she was into anyway. it. When, when you emerge, the boy has laid down on the ground and is pretending to be unconscious just so you won't knock him unconscious. <laughs> okay. I drank him <laughs> as well. Um, uh, she has a point, though. I vote with you, nope. Argyle. It's an excellent point. I vote with Kira Argyle as well. Yeah, someone will eventually replace him, but yeah. Yeah, it's just important how it looks. You can't, you can't just kill him. Do we have to kill him? Can we just break his legs and arms or something so he's out of the picture? Or 
I don't think that's how. It I works. didn't think that you would say <laughs> that, but that's even worse than death. I think. <laughs> I mean, it's also healable, so I don't think yeah. it would. It would achieve. No, but break them, break them. <laughs> core, core, you have a bit of DM inspiration going here, and you get the idea. You should also rip out his tongue then. God. God All geez. right. No, I, I think what we do is low on uh, on on you know vitality right now. We cut his bounds. We ask him nicely to run. Barnex shoots him in the back with an arrow. Of course, of course, I. I can shoot him in the back. I'll shoot him in the back. Yeah. It's fine. I shoot I have... him in the back as he's running away after freeing himself from captivity, and we were just trying to apprehend a criminal. Things went poorly. He maybe assaulted the lady of the house in the or he assaulted one of us. We retaliated in self-defense, and you know things went poorly. Jean Jacques. I agree. And Tar Tarnok, I agree that he needs to die. I really do. That's a man who shouldn't be alive. But this would be, and I mean it, our first non danger kill. We would kill Wouldn't because be we first. wanted. So I don't it would be mine. I, 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 I do mine not. First. I cannot be on board with this this would be cold-blooded murder so if you want to do this i'm all for you to do it but i will not be there i will go sleep i will wake up i will still think that he might have gotten away and if you tell me he got in away i'll be fine with it i can even track him down for you later i'm with barnack so go to sleep then yeah also, if you do need poison, I have poison from the spike. Arnak, <laughs> please. <laughs> I mean, it's, I mean that's painless. Okay, I won't I'm be a good. part of this, but I do have poison. But use my bow and I have poison. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm like going to sleep. Yeah, why don't you uh, actually? You know, uh, it's that there is a. I think I, I should discuss this out of character. There's one logistic part of this that I'm not getting yet. How are we going to call the cops? Go to a nearby precinct and literally and tell them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So why? So back in character, why don't you? Uh, why don't you take these two? Hmm. Me? To the precinct. Precinct. Yeah. You. Sure. Yeah. You. Core. Perhaps Tiny. Yeah, better, the uh, three of us can do that. I actually yeah. agree with that. And we have an individual that is too dangerous to transport, and the two of us remain behind to keep guard over. Yep. Yeah. Exactly. That works. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm a, I'll continue communication while you get away. Okay. okay. Um, although you did knock one of them out, so Kor, you'll have to carry her. The other one can walk. <laughs> you hear from the other room. No, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I'll wait for them to for everybody to leave, and then it's just me, Jean Jacques, because the other two are sleeping already, right? So. Hmm. <clears throat> right. So, as far as I understand it, um. Bar uh, Barnack, Kor, and is Tani going as well for the prisoner yeah, escort? I go. Okay. So you have one awake prisoner and live one. He needs a little convincing to actually get up on his feet, and he keeps insisting that he's unconscious, um, which in and of itself is probably not the most convincing thing to do. Um, but you get him on his feet, the other one slung over Kor's shoulder, and you guys set out into the very cold morning, just the slightest... Slightest pale glow appearing on the horizon, just in the distance that you know that in the next couple hours the sun's going to come up. Um, but it's still very much completely dark as you trudge through the snow towards the local police precinct, which, as far as you know, uh, could be anywhere. So um, it's mm -hmm. probably going to be a, a little uh, tracking as well. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, let's say that will be a straight-up intelligence check for one person who takes the lead on finding the police precinct. I can do that. Okay. So this is going to go super well. <laughs> Two. 
Okay. <laughs> Barnack, Cor, and Tani spend two and a half hours finding oh, the police precinct. <laughs> because after about an hour, people are waking up, and you start having to hide because you're carrying an unconscious and bound person. <laughs> so, you guys have some time in the house to, uh, to get everything sorted. Yeah. I'll wait for, like, ten minutes. If possible, I, like, I, uh... In the in between that they were getting things together, mm -hmm. um, uh, perhaps some tea that's available that you know I'm drinking. I'm having the rest of my meal. In that I, time, uh, I just quickly pop in and tell Remy that we're all good and we're gonna protect him for a few more next days. Okay. Was, oh, yeah, that was I, that. I did that. <laughs> yeah, he was like sitting there the whole time, and you finally pop in just and he's like, "Oh, thank the gods!" And he just crashes over onto the side on the couch and starts sleeping. Yeah, I um, I stand up, and I I turn to Jean Jacques, and uh, I'm assuming that the prisoner got away, tried to attack you, and uh, we tried to defend ourselves, and uh, it ended up in a casualty. Is that what's going to look like? Yep. Okay. Uh, but we gotta make it authentic, though. And I throw a haymaker at Jean Jacques's face. I don't move. <laughs> okay, so you take five points of bludgeoning damage as yeah. Turnock clocks you in the face. Maybe, maybe still a little bit of a sucker punch. Um, because it's, it's a sucker punch. Yeah. Yeah, but like even more in that he says it, but it comes so quickly right after that you barely have time to process the information coming at you before the punch connects. Um, and yeah, a little bit of blood it, spits out. <laughs> Do you have anything else that you would like to say to him, or may I? Yeah, I just spit blood out of my mouth, kind of feeling more my teeth, like, nah, knock yourself out. Okay. I, um, I head towards, uh, and I say to Jean-Jacques, uh, uh, be here if you want to, because I need to bring him to the living room for in order for this to be convincing. And uh, I bring him out, mm -hmm. and uh, <clears throat> he still has the gag on. I, I I'm guessing. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to take it out, mm -hmm. <clears throat> and uh, I'm going to ask him uh, anything you'd like to say, uh, knowing the fate that's about to 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 come over you. And I get his rapier. That's now my rapier. Mm -hmm. And uh, I position Locked where up. I intend on stab and stabbing him. Okay. He kind of looks down a bit. Looks at you. You're just going to murder someone. Right here. In the Lord's living room. While I'm still bound. Helpless. And unable to be any threat. Or to defend myself. You're not unable to be any threat. Am I not? What can I do? Right now? That's why I'm doing it. So you can't... Do you, you unbound his legs, I presume, so he, could, so he could walk into the living room? Yeah, yeah. Okay. He looks at the, at the rapier. Um, and so standing where I'm imagining that you guys are standing, um, which I had quite close to the, uh, to the table and everything. Um, would that be correct? Yeah, yeah. Huh? Uh, mm -hmm. He goes and lets himself slowly sink down on the table to sit. And he crosses his legs. He looks up at you. And you can see, like, he, he is not like the, the, the woman before. He is, he is worried about dying. Absolutely. But he's trying to maintain his, his calm. And he looks at the two of you. How well do you know your friend, the half-orc? The big one. Is there anything I could tell you? Secrets, perhaps, that would spare my life? Why would we ever believe anything you have to say? You don't have to, but... Well, he has to be truthful for the next few hours. Oh, yeah. When it's reasonable. Which, in this case, it is very reasonable for me to be truthful. I give a step back and and I just stand there 
and I look at Jan Jack and suddenly I have the sudden realization that I wouldn't want to know Jean Jacques' opinion for this one. Okay. That I you wouldn't? That I, yes, I wouldn't. Okay. And uh, yes, I get. I grab my, I grab a chair. I sit in front of him and say, "Yes, tell me." <clears throat> and I will and trust your I word will... if you say that yeah. I will not die as a result one of what other, I tell you. Then one I'll other you. part of this bargain. You won't come after us. After us. After us. Afterwards. I'm sorry. <laughs> he thinks for a moment. I won't come after you. Nah. No. 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 You're Is not that... able to provide. You. You won't provide to any of your masters, bosses, or anything like that any information regarding what you discovered here tonight about our encounter. Rather than it was a combat and the police took me away afterwards. Um, and uh, I know that you are unable to convince your patron to do otherwise uh, something else other than hunt us either way. But uh, you won't collaborate in any way, shape or form towards this happening. I can agree to that. I knew your friend. Well, I've seen your friend before. We called him the Hammer. Used to be a time Scarlet Rose didn't run this town. Just had a small operation. Smuggling. Smuggling people. Your friend. He looked out for them. He worked for them. You would have been one of the petals if he'd stayed. It cracked my head when we were trying to raid one of their shipments. That's how I remember him. The hammer. You should ask him about it. I just head to the front door after he ends up with that. I head to the door and uh, I'm just uh, laid against the, not laid, but leaned against the uh, the frame, the, the door frame, uh, just watching the front door scene uh, when the guys are going to return. I'm, I'm okay. literally just standing there waiting for them to return. Is this the extent of our bargain or are you going to try to verify it? Our deal was I would tell you, not that I would wait until you were satisfied. You're going to the cops, as agreed. Very and well. I turn, turn away from him again, and I'm still just waiting. Okay. He looks over to Jean-Jacques. He's trying to gauge probably your reaction. Yeah. This blank expression. Jean-Jacques walks over to him. Sits like one ash cheek on the table. Mm -hmm. Crosses his arms, and there's he puts his... Uh, he puts his uh, arm uh, or, or his hand on his bicep so that his family's crest mm -hmm. is visible. Um, and he kind of like clicks something or, you know, just like brushes over it and then the family crest just changes and it's um, a picture or not a picture, an engraving of a, a black hand on the signet. Okay. He looks him in the eyes, trying to get gauge whether that he recognizes it. Let's see. My first die roll of the evening. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Um, let me check. Intelligence. Okay. <clears throat> he looks at it. He looks you in the eyes, and he gives a familiar nod all of a sudden to you. That's it. I just nod to him and lean in and very, very quietly whisper just, we'll be in touch. And I walk away. You see, like, as you said that, you see he raised his hands in expectation that you might unbind him. Um, but then when you walk away, he just drops them again, slightly disappointed. 
Very well. I stand, if I may just say, I stand next to Turnock, mm -hmm. looking out, you know, for the rest of the return, and I just say to him, look over at him, and I just say, um, sometimes loyalty is the only thing that a man has. And then I continue walking into the snow okay. towards where we um, place the body of the dead guard. Okay. Very well. Um, is there anything in particular that you want to do still there? Otherwise, we'll move ahead to the time that the, the black hats arrive. Stand in the snow looking at a dead body. All right. So it does, let's say two and a half hours might have been a slight exaggeration, but it definitely takes over an hour for um, for, for, for the group to, to return with a trio of black hats. Literally, you know, the black beret hats uh, on their heads. Yes, Barney? Do we get the chance to... I, I would like to ask something of, of both Dani and, and Kor oh, while we were talking there. Yeah. Um, okay, so... It doesn't matter if while we're talking... While we're walking there or back. doesn't matter okay. when. But I'll, I'll turn to primarily Kor and say... Um, Kor? Um, when did we turn into executioners? That's not us. I, I don't like where that's heading, Barnak. I, I am, I am with you. Like I'm fine with this, killing in this, battle, with honor, but not, not murder. But this, this isn't the first time. Um, Wait, who? The, the cultists down there, the ones that were trying to do things. We were defending ourselves by there. We weren't. They were running away. We weren't defending ourselves down there. We didn't investigate it like we used to. I remember the Aboleth, well, the voice at that point, we didn't know it was an Aboleth yet, told us, right, to, to interrupt them. Or something. something, yeah, but... Yes, that... we thought they were doing something extremely dangerous, so we had to stop them. Which but... they were, kind of. I mean, yeah, maybe they were, and even if they were, why did we kill so many people down there? Remember what we used to do? Well, remember what we set out to do? To save a freaking village. A single village. To save it. And we saved a few people. We killed a few people. Well, we killed a few monsters, but a we also saved a few monsters, if you remember. Yes. We didn't kill all of them. So when did that change? I don't know when that changed, but I don't like it. Was it after looking at our futures? No, it was before. I don't know. After Jack Jack joined. <laughs> I, I, it's all John Jack's fault. <laughs> when I know, I know Jean Jacques most, I think, from all of you here, and he is, in his core, probably the best person of us all here. He's shady, but while he was on the ship, he saved lives more than a few times while still putting his life in danger. I don't know the extent of his magical prowess, and maybe his life wasn't really in danger, but what I saw, it was heroic. Tarnok, I trust that he will always do what's honor-bound. Well, that he's honor-bound and he will do what's right. But just ex executing a person... doesn't matter yes. how, how evil they are. Goes against the Republic Code that Jean-Jacques talks about. Goes, to get, goes against that honor Tarnok to talks about. Goes against what we tried to do in, in Ashheart. Goes against have, all of ours. We could have killed all of those bugbears, if you remember. We didn't. I'm afraid what would happen if 
we had gone there now, like if we if we've changed so much, we would have killed the bugbears. If we went there now, even those bugbears that that just wanted to run away would have probably died. And I don't like it. But as I said to Jean-Jacques, I don't understand that game of, of higher politics, whatever. I, I don't understand it. I don't understand what it means to be sending a message to someone. I don't understand what it means to be shady. And that's what I hate most about something else as well. I don't oh. like things shady. We did leave that shadowy creature. Leave. We didn't we attack did. it. We did. We did. So, right, yeah, I, I just wanted to ask you guys I, that. I, I don't I, feel good. No, I, I don't either because I, I let a, I did a lot of things I regret before I met you guys. And I think we have trying to become better, be good, help people. And we don't we we sometimes might lose sight of that, and we can't let that happen. Hel helping people and helping ourselves; those are sometimes two different goals. Yes. But still, surviving is also important. So, I understand what we've been doing. <sighs> Doesn't matter. All right. <clears throat> so probably that conversation would have happened before you arrived at the precinct um, just to make sure that the black hats wouldn't oversee overhear you yeah but you arrive there you pick up some yeah, of probably, the people yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and um, you explain the situation right. and they send several of them with you um, surprised to find freelancers seeking out the authorities outright um and um, that is when we go back to Lord Phoenix's estate. And um, when you arrive there, you see the front door open. Um, Turnock. Wait, what, what, was that before or, or after we got lost for two hours in the pub? No, no, this, this, this was the, <laughs> with the one hour delay. Because as you find, you've walked around most of the district, which was slower because you were carrying someone and you had a prisoner and you had to hide sometimes. Yeah. And you walked around, you, w you essentially went eastward, walked through the whole district, and then found out that if you had just gone westward, it would have been like a 10-minute walk. <laughs> of course. We so did. I was just at the end of your circle, basically. But when you get there, so it's, it's only 10 minutes to get back to the house, um, and then you find Turnock in the doorway. Uh, three black hats, you know, not super well-dressed against the cold, but they've got, like, fur coats at least to, to hold it off trudging through the snow, which now you guys are forming kind of a path to the front door. And um, Jean-Jacques, I assume that you didn't spend a whole hour by the guard, or did you? I did. You did, okay. So by the time that you guys arrive, Jean-Jacques, you know, you, you probably see it's them coming first. <laughs> Jean-Jacques uh, is, is dead, dead from cold. <laughs> right, he's, he froze to death. <laughs> True. No. Um... And then you guys uh, make it into the house, and the black hats uh, look around, check the damage. You know, you see one of them has uh, a clipboard, literally with a piece of parchment, seemingly the sergeant probably, and he's just taking notes and, and writing down the the situation that they find, along with the notes that they took when when you guys arrived at the precinct. And uh, one of them goes and looks over at Argyle and goes, "Uh, this is a prisoner, eh? All right, you're with us." Uh I look, I look very confused at that moment seeing Argyle. Like, uh, yes, that is the prisoner. Yeah, he's right. a live tour, and I just look at John Jacques and Turnock, and I like nod approvingly, you know, a slight smile. Like <laughs> they both look at you. If only you knew a reason. <laughs> yeah. Why do you do that? <laughs> I just, I like intensely for ten seconds, just dead face, dead. Just staring at you. I look like. at Turnock, I just wink. <laughs> at, at this point, uh, just from the commotion of all these people inside, the complete miscommunication between Cor, Jean-Jacques, and Turnock, um, <laughs> Cor's like, hey, good job. And they're like, you motherfucker. Um, the, the guardsmen actually cause enough commotion to wake Lady Rhaenyra, and she comes out, and through the doorway briefly, you guys see that Lord Storm has also awakened. 
Uh, he's still groggy, still lying in bed, but he's awake at least. Um, and she comes out uh, in, a, in a morning gown and she briefly talks with the, with the, um, with the police, um, giving them her account as well now that they have the opportunity. Um, and you hear, overhear them inviting her down to the precinct as well for, for a more extensive account of what happened. Along with each of you, actually, you know, invited. Um, although Barnack, Kor, and Tani probably gave a sufficiently detailed account that it's not required. Um, <laughs> and then they, they take Argyle and they start marching him out of the house and uh, be on their way. Yeah, so. before they take Argyle, I'm like, should I break his legs before he leaves? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so as you, as you contemplate that, he still walks out on his legs that are not broken. <laughs> and all in all, it takes like 15 minutes overall um, between the Black Hats arriving and leaving. It is now a good probably 8 a.m. The sun is just coming up. It's that, that very pale blue color to the whole city of the light hitting the, the snow. Um, the snow, like now a day old almost and, and trudged through by, by people late at night and uh, the city coming to life but you guys probably close the front door and um, kind of take inventory as you do Lady Rhaenyra kind of goes like oh um, my husband had actually prepared something to give to you I, he's not in any state to, to provide much context but I'll, I'll, I'll do what I can. just give me a moment and she heads back into the bedchamber and pr comes out again holding a folder uh, with what seems to be several pieces of paper inside and um, she hands it to whoever stands closest um, I'll put my hand forward again yeah. alright so she hands it over to Jean-Jacques and uh, inside you find a list and you see like a quenical guest list um, at the top and it's just a list of the most prominent people you count about 70 75 names uh, at a quick glance, and um, you see their names, their uh, like, what they are so race, and also their um, political affiliation, as well as in in a fourth column, you see a list of what seem to be different assembly committees, uh, government committees that each person is associated with. Um, I'm going to share that list with you guys on uh, Discord. And it's also going to be available as a command in chat. It's not going to be super interesting to look at for anyone in chat, but this will be your overview of the uh, the most important people according to Lord Storm at the Equinical. Um, are any like uh, highlighted or anything like that? <laughs> um, no, but they are grouped by committee, um, and you see that there's been some some very quick like circling of certain names and stuff like that. Um, mostly, you know, you see like the stadtholders circled and. Um, the the Grand Pangenary, you know, the most important people are, are circled there. But that's pretty much it. Um, Karen, just one question for, for you, because uh, mm -hmm. I'm a bit confused. I, I, uh, who who was it that told me the, the, that the Scarlet Rose and everything? Be, was it Remy or Argyle? I, 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 I oh, who Argyle. told you what exactly? Like that they were looking for me for going back in or something. Oh, that was Argyle. Oh, Argyle. Yeah, Argyle yeah, was, was, you know, was, he was, was trying to bait you. I was if it you. was Remy, actually. Okay, it was No, Remy. no, he was trying to bait you into, like, you know, coming back and essentially freeing him and running off with him so that mm, he could get out of there. I thought it was... I was confusing myself. I thought it was Remy, and that's what, that's why I wanted to talk to John jack only. Ah, okay, okay, okay. okay. No, that's fine. That's that's fair. Uh, but, yeah, she... Um, I, I hope that's cleared up. If, you know, if we need to revisit that, just let me know. Um, but as for the list... Uh, she produces that, and then you see that the last page um, is is a very quick um, is a picture that I can't find right now, but I will share it in a moment of the grounds of the Solidariat, the Parliament building in Postitia, um, with you know as a very particular area marked off as being where the party is, um, but that seems to be a very like standard. So there's no information about the rest of of the building. There's no indication of whose offices are which where uh only generally like where general uh, ministries are um and this seems to be part of the actual invitation to uh to the equinical to give people uh, an indication of like you're going to be seeing this and this of the solidariat when you come to visit for the equinical celebration this year okay all right so um kevin was there one of them supposed to have this Lord Traitor? Yes, 
that's a note okay. uh, that was put specifically by uh, Lord Fennec. You don't know why, but behind indeed one of them, it says Lord Traitor. Um, seems to be a nickname of some kind that's been associated with this particular person. You did elaborate. So we actively campaigned for the abolishment of nobility, you said. Ah, yeah, yeah. See, there you go. Nothing. So I don't no. know if that's... No, no, that's correct. Everything's in there that should be in there. Don't worry. John uh, Jack raises his eyebrows at looking at um, the name of one Francois Bonneville. Okay. And specifically looking at the race, because we spoke about that previously. Did so we? It's interesting. Ah, yeah. Well, you said that most ASMR became unsold. Or oh, unsold. yeah, yeah, then that is correct. That is a, a point to note. Um, he is one of the First. few ASMR that is still present and prominent in Postitia. Um. More blood. Mm. <laughs> to try. Remember, the, remember the, the, the list of people El Elena told us to investigate? That's one of our missions. Yeah. I only see Belmont, and I also see Aethne. You remember well, what we're I told We're looking for about... their offices, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. For the but other people, yeah. It, it, it's a bit unrelated, but but uh, remember the contact Finn told me that used to come with me back then and knew about mm -hmm. my past? Right. She's going to be there. I see, I see her on the list. Okay. It's going to be an interesting night tomorrow. In two days. Two, is it near tomorrow? Monday and Tuesday. It's on Wednesday. Oh, I thought we were already in... Okay. No, no, it's just you've, you've gone through the night. You guys essentially are approaching, you know. I would say probably at this point, each of you does indeed suffer a point of exhaustion just from purely having to expend so much of yourselves to uh, um, to do all of this stuff. <laughs> I've depleted my magic pool multiple times. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Um, as you guys are sitting there, and I will find the map after and, and share it for the next week, but... Um, because it's not that important right now. But as you guys are sitting there, Lady Rhaenyra actually sits down on one of the chairs nearby, and looking around, uh, she she looks at the folder specifically, and she says, uh, well, I'm not as well informed as my husband, but I can perhaps offer a little clarification of the information there, um, based, on, based on what he's told me so far, if you like. Of course, if you already know plenty, then I don't, I don't want to muddle your thoughts on the matter of course no please do well you see the most important thing as far as i could understand from from what fennec has told me is that the committees are are what matters here so the reason is that over the past few months fennec has been up for several important positions and we're still waiting to hear what will actually be the situation for us going forward but he has been proposed to have a seat on the budget appropriation committee it's chances are slim as i understand but it would lift him immediately to be pretty much one of the most important people in postitia um another option would be for him uh he has been interviewing with the dominion security oversight group they uh well, they oversee all forms of in internal security for Postitia. Um, so, you know, you can think of the Black Hats fall under their oversight, um, Unusual Services Division, all of those. So, once again, a very, very big step up. And finally, the most likely scenario would be that he becomes the chairman for the Tax Oversight Committee. Um, which is exactly as boring as it sounds, but it would ensure that he is a prominent man here in Postitia specifically, which is, it, it concerns itself with Postitia only. But uh, those would be the, the options for him, and so there are several reasons why anyone from this list may wish um, wish harm upon us, or, or to at least prevent Fennec from taking up any of these positions, as the confirmation hearings are supposed to be, and she kind of thinks for a moment, I believe that they're supposed to be in, in 10 days from now. My lady, do you know when the Bonnevilles became part of the Tax Oversight Committee? Bonnevilles? Um, 
gosh, I, I have to admit, I'm not that well informed myself on everything. But if I recall, they they came to prominence perhaps two years ago. And when did we find out they were attacked? Less than that, right? A lot less than that? Oh, yeah, it was this year for sure. Like, okay. it was in the past three months. All right. Then Francisco's Grundig. Grundig. Grundig is, is the dead. name, is the last name of the lady who was in the papers being murdered by the by the butcher beast killer. Right. And then one of the relatives was also in the, the bar, bar crying. Yeah. yeah, that was Philip. Which would have opened up a son of a him. Isn't it fun when it all connects back together? <laughs> yeah, but it connects in different ways. Because I feel like we also heard Zakiria to me, or, or Cornelius Black Brackenbridge. Yes, you did. You own, uh, you are currently in the possession of one, one of the of books, books. Yeah. that um, actually belongs to his personal library. Although yeah. it was probably on loan to the university at the time. Yeah. And then from this one. So, um, let me see here. Okay, this one I don't think we know when you have from. Yeah. Hmm. But in any case, um, and she kind of, you know, watches you guys go over the list and, and take in all the information, which is there, of, of which there is plenty. And you can imagine that Fennec has even more information about these people in his head. Um, but she kind of starts rattling off probably her own understanding of the situation as best as she can. Um, and she goes... Uh, so I, I know of a few tensions between, you know, these various groups and why they would perhaps be interested in influencing what happens to my husband. If you do, you want me to, I, I don't know if it's accurate, but yeah. it's the best I can offer. Please do my lady. You for sure know more than we do. Okay. Um, so may I, and she reaches for the papers for a moment, um, just to have a handhold. And when, when you give them to her, she just kind of starts going over them. Okay. So, the Advanced Science Directorate, um, I, don't, I don't know if you're aware, but if you're not, it's obviously it's a, it's a division of our government that focuses on expanding our research into science and the arcane, and, you know, it, it's essentially the Erudite College at a governmental level. But recent years, I don't know if you've been paying attention to, to, to the court hearings, but um, they've been under investigation and, and been punished for experiments that were considered extremely unethical. Um... And so, in, in recent years, they've they've really struggled to uh, to maintain their position, and um, outside of outside of their own members um, being a part of the government and thus keeping, you know, budgets and things like that in place. But if Fennec were to join the Budget Appropriation Committee, they would probably see a very 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 big reduction in what they could do. So that that may. Um, speak against him because well my husband has very strong morals and he was not at all pleased to find out what they were doing and he's been campaigning for almost a year to uh, to reduce spending on that she kind of thinks for a moment um, well next up um, I would say probably the most interesting one um would be the um and she kind of starts going over it all um i guess the republican reform commission they're 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 a curious group not all of them are necessarily as as extreme some simply seek to you know improve the processes of our government but there are some let's say extremists who want to remove nobility from the political process entirely and that is probably a good reason why any of them may be very interested in making sure that, you know, a noble like my husband would not be placed in any important positions. But I'm afraid out of these, actually, that's that's what stands out to me the most. The others, oof, I don't, I, I wish he told me, but I, I don't know why he put these others on the list necessarily. And I, I don't think he'll be well enough to speak for at least a day or so, and of course he'll need to rest as well to be ready for the equinical, um, if he still intends to, to attend. If he still attends to, in, uh, to attend, could we have like an hour before you leave, before we leave, just to speak then? Of course. 
I mean, I, I, I was kind of expecting that you would be here anyway to escort us to, to that. I don't know what you agreed, yeah. but it seemed the most logical to me. Um, and she hands back the folder with all the names and the information in it uh, to Jean-Jacques. Um, and she kind of stands up. And you can see, like, she's still very pale in the face, she's still very tired. Um, in any case, uh, if you'll excuse me, I, I'm going to, to look after him a bit more. Please let me know if you need anything. Um, she um, my lady, do you have any more men at arms or, or servants that could serve to protect you to, on this day, or were all of them. She, she had let that trail off? She had kind of paused um, mid thought, and then when you say that, she blinks and she says, Oh my god. They're, they're, they're going to come and they're going to find the carnage. They, they'll be here soon. I think the, the shift changes at, at, at nine. Um, can, 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 can you take care of that? Can you tell I them what happened? Yes, no. I think we can. I don't think we will be going anywhere. For at least a little while. Very well. Um, and she comes up and she actually takes your hand briefly and shakes it and says thank you. And then she just slowly glides back into the master bedroom and disappears behind a closed door. As she as she does it, I I come up and I say, "Do you need anything else from me?" You asked Lady Rhaenyra that. No, the group. Oh. Okay, okay. So group. I think not. I they should probably rest, but. Yeah, in the middle of his sentence, I start getting to, to my bedroom. <laughs> we'll wake you up for a third watch then. <laughs> All right. Uh, um, I'll take first. Y'all can go rest. All right. I'll stay up and wait for the guards. All right. So the group goes to rest. You know, you settle things with the guard. Eventually throughout the day, the, the police actually, uh, the, the Black Hats send... Um, coroners as well to pick up the bodies for investigation and um, and things like that. So you're constantly in this kind of bustle trying to keep things quiet for those resting um, and at the same time dealing with the mess that was made last night. And you finally start getting towards your eight hours rest, which takes up a significant portion of the day. Um, probably by the time that everyone is back on their feet, well rested, well fed, and capable of tackling another day, let's say, um, it is around 3 p.m. in the afternoon. So I want to ask you guys here, because I think this would be a nice place to kind of start looking a bit more towards the equinical. Having, you know, the time that you have left today on Monday and tomorrow, a whole Tuesday, what is it that the group chooses to do with that time, or do they choose to kind of recuperate and and do that sort of thing, like like was suggested, I think, by someone? Tarnok said he has something to do. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, uh, but I can do that. I mean, I just need some time. You know, uh, it could be. To tomorrow or this afternoon it could be tomorrow before the equinical could be you know whatever yeah. uh, I just wanted some time yeah. all right yeah I have a couple things that I'd like to see too one is I, I want to try and find out if I can because I was reading the Austrian dispatch to to because I remember there was something about the if I understood correctly the person that will lead the peacekeeping um, expedition would be R Rondabius Brackenbridge, right? Ah, uh, that's right. Yeah. That Atticus Hope is just a part of it whom Jean, Jean, yeah. Jean, Jean Pierre wants to replace. Mm -hmm. So, to my understanding, would Mr. Brackenbridge have the authority to replace one of the members if he so chose? That is indeed the authority that he has. That was the big okay. breakthrough was that Strauss changed his vote, and that's how Brackenbridge was appointed the leader of the uh, of the expedition, and thus he is allowed to to set together the other yeah. uh, parties. Of course, with political pressure behind it, um, yeah. so it's not like he gets to really choose all on his own, but he has the power, tip technically in in practice. Yeah. And 
now a question for you. If somebody were to, for example, embarrass themselves quite significantly mm-hmm. at the Aquanical, would that make them lose enough face so as to be kicked off of, let's say, a peacekeeping expedition to a foreign kingdom? That would depend on how public the display was. Yeah. And especially whether it would happen near the Imperial Ambassador. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. So one thing that I wanted to do is like drop by Appies and not that Appies. Um, drop by the Arcana Inquisitas at some point okay. and ask Basil and that just if he has a potion or poison or any form of imbibement of any kind that, that one could use to enhance one's drink to make them behave erratically or especially inappropriate uh lee okay um, so either like just you know things like taking their clothes off and starting like behaving I, I will say that interesting enough if you talk to basil about that he will refer you to a regular apothecary you might have to extend some of your charm to make yeah. it happen um but you recall as you're leaving thinking about you know where could i find an apothecary like this that the front shop for the delucas is an apothecary True. and they have underground ties so if 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 a yeah. place such as that exists that is not controlled by the uh the crimson rose or a uh, Scar- scarlet rose then yeah it would be that okay with that in mind i would probably approach the topic with remy and stuff but i'm just thinking and this is for the group maybe out of character like if we want to tackle this problem i don't know if like I don't know how to approach it because we have very limited amounts of time and they're, it's either applying pressure on Lord Brackenbridge to kick the person off of the committee or in some way either making the person quit by you know, blackmail or extortion or persuasion um, or one of the other things that I met, was thinking about is like turning invisible, slipping something in their drink and helping them make a horrendous fool out of themselves. Uh, in the middle of the most important event of the year. Which can go horribly wrong, but can also be very fun if it works. I like that idea. Somebody somebody (laughs) else could drink it, so we got to be very careful. No, I I would turn it invisible and slip it into his drinks directly, but... Or spike all the drinks in the... (laughs) Spike everybody just goes absolutely (laughs) crazy. Yeah. It would be risky. Um, Yeah. But, but why, why not that's, both? That's in character for us. Yeah, so. why not both? <laughs> spike, spike their drink, and at the same time talk to like talk, talk to the person that can kick them off. Yeah, All like right, but hold on, hold on. This is for the actual at the equinical, right? So this is something you want to do at the equinical. Yeah. Well, it's yeah. I mean, it, I need to prepare for it. Which yeah, is but that, that's important. fine though. But what I what I want to propose is that let's let's figure out what happens between now and the equinical, right, so yeah. I can give you the update next time. And yeah. then next time you will have you be on Wednesday, and we will yeah. start a well, few hours before the equinical, yeah. and you can be planning and getting ready, and you've got all your supplies and stuff yeah. like that. Uh-huh. Ideally, the embarrassment at the equinical is Plan C. Plan A is blackmail or extort Atticus. Plan B is blackmail or extort Brackenbridge. And if nothing can be achieved in either of those, then try and make uh, Atticus. Look like a fool in front of everybody and be kicked off okay. the committee. So that I I would like to tr- like I would try to gather information and, okay. and but I either need to I guess meet with the Delucas for that or with somebody else. But I I I think yeah I don't want to hold us up too much longer either because I'm also eager to get to the Equinical. I just don't know how to go about this investigation without. Yeah, it's it's more a matter of practicality, probably. If you consider yeah. the amount of time that remains, you just yeah. don't have the time to properly so like too. tail someone and yeah. figure out their routine and then break into their house and figure yeah. out you know what to blackmail exactly. them with. Um, Although I could try and just break into their house. <laughs> <laughs> you could just break into their house. Yeah. Uh, well, let me know. Let me know if that's what you want to do. Then you know we'll resolve it offline well, between yeah. now and then. And then yeah. um, we'll see the results next time. I'll, I'll get I'll get some embarrassment potion though, <laughs> I, for sure. 
Also, um, didn't, well, we mentioned the paperwork, the permits for the weapons to Elena, and she said something along the lines of that can be if. arranged, but was it if we go and confirm his husband's demise or not? Yeah, totally. Uh, okay. That that was the agreement there that we would, uh, you know, that you would look into that, but we, we would first need to go on our mission. I think that was the agreement. Well, the, there's two different mm -hmm. contracts. You have the official contract through the freelancers, which was you have your payment listed, it's gold, and you get this much and this much for, you know, finding out what happened. Um, then you have the unofficial agreement with her in which she fast tracks your permits for your magical items in exchange for, during the equinical, searching the offices oh. of the people yeah, okay. that yeah. she suspects were involved in his disappearance. Yeah. yeah. And only and then, one of them is in the guest list. Yeah. So that at least yeah. only one of them was marked as important by Lord Storm. Yeah. 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 Um, overall, this is seventy-five people out of about two hundred that will be attending the the celebration. And okay, don't you so dare start talking to everyone that you see. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen only a single name that I really want to talk to. Oh. Mr. Strauss. Okay. Well, no, the two oh. names. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking Christ. He wants to talk to your cousin. Oh, uh, okay. No, oh, no, no, no. That's going to happen offline. Three uh, names. Okay. Jean-Jacques will help me craft a letter. Okay, oh, so, anyway. but again, just really quickly back to the next, uh, to the previous question, and then we'll, yeah. we'll cut off the stream. Um, any other business out? So I know Turnock uh, wants to, to do his thing. I know Jean-Jacques is going to get some embarrassment potion and attempt to gather blackmail against Atticus. And go and either speak with his mother in right. person if he manages that with Elena or send her a message. I don't know which of the two she'll be able to help yeah. with. But I think we can do that one, especially offline, because it mm -hmm. will be more interesting, I think. Okay, so from yeah. Tani, Kor, and Barnak, is there anything that you guys are doing until the equinical? But just... Before we split up the next day and everything, well, after we, mm -hmm. right, before the clinical, I, I want to talk to the party because. Okay. This, we, Let's so, do that. Uh, our, our, rec our recon, like, instead of telling John Jack that I needed to speak to him because I was confused with. The yeah, yeah. I told everyone, like, I want to talk to you when, when we have time. Okay. So let, let's say that, you know, by the time, this is probably over breakfast. Uh, you know, at 3 p.m., but over breakfast, yeah. uh, you guys recuperated Brunch. and um, sitting there, and you have the whole group with you. What do you say, Carlos? Or what does oh, yeah. Carlos so, so, okay, so, guys, I need to talk to you about something that uh, I found, I confirmed yesterday. Um, this is not something that I've ever told anyone, I think, I, at least not in full, but before I met. Barnack and Tani and we became freelancers and everything. Uh, like I, I, I had a like I, we all had had did, like had different lives right then, right? And um, when I arrived in in Postizia, I was a uh, I was a sellsword for a while just to make a living, right? Um, and um, I was working for what I thought was a merchant, but he turned out to be a criminal that was smuggling people and uh, I ended up killing him and almost dying myself but I I've always had the 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 suspicion he was related to the Scarlet Rose but I never knew for sure but yesterday uh, it was his name Argyle uh, mentioned that the Scarlet Rose was looking for me and that they, like they were like they were involved with my and, former employer and he said he knew you yeah from back then yeah i, I don't remember him i think like I, he might have like i i met a lot of people i broke Had a, a different name yeah yeah the, the hammer <laughs> so you sure uh, that with uh turnock and i after oh, yeah, of course he did yeah probably to learn he tried to 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 blackmail me i guess in, in, or in order to, like yesterday but that's when i told you guys i needed to talk to you but i didn't actually know for sure it was the scarlet rose that was involved with that until he confirmed it yesterday so 
I think that's something we need to be like I wanted you all to know because we they might be trying to contact me again or something he mentioned something about the Scarlet Rose wanting me to join in again and why didn't you tell us before well because I wasn't sure it was the Scarlet Rose I just thought it was some random criminal that I used to work with he's dead so I thought that was done <laughs> but you suspected yeah I suspected but it was just nagging in the back of my mind mm. in hindsight I probably should have told you guys probably by the way I think the internal reaction to this is just I I'm still to this moment dead silent not is this the reason why Argyle was left alive yeah didn't didn't you decide to kill him and we had a crisis and and we returned and he was still there well he managed to buy his life with, with this information yep okay don't get me wrong i'm hmm. I'm happy that he I'm didn't happy. kill him too, but yeah. not too happy about the reason. Okay. I mean, we've all had a... Kor, do you have any semblance of knowing who the Scarlet Rose might be then? No, not at all. I I didn't even know for sure or anything else. Like, I just had a... A suspicion. Do you do you remember any detail that might be correlated with this now? I was drunk half the time I was working. Oh, that's fine then. <laughs> so that's my life core. I barely remember. <laughs> you know Barnack's only Barnack, how old are you again? I'm the oldest one here. Yeah, I know, but how many years is that again? More than fifty. <laughs> He can't count higher. But, yeah. So Bardic is effectively 25 because he's been drunk half of the time, so it doesn't count. Um, I, I will get say, wiser when I drink. Uh, I will say, Core, as they're starting to joke around a bit, right, about the whole thing, you have a perhaps a slightly, possibly painful flashback to the whole scenario, and you would maybe have this slight sneaking suspicion that in your drunken states... Perhaps you're a bit more aware of things than you realized. There's just, like, uh, that, that nagging feeling at the back of your mind, it's not gone yet. I do think, Core, that if you can remember details about this merchant, and they do air quotes on that, <laughs> gentleman that you uh, liberated from his mortal coil, um, you might be able to pull on that thread. I realize I remember... it might be... Oh, I remember, yeah, I'll... I'll try to, I don't know, I'll try to remember, because I, all I n know for sure is that they were smuggling people in, in, in ships to the city. But... Hmm. Let's see if we can find something I, out after the Equinical, but... That, that reminds me, the Equinical. Um... I had a question for everyone here, also probably Lords, well not Lord Storm, but it's only us here. Do you guys think that Scarlet Rose will be at the Equinical? Why would someone like that miss it? With the amount of influence they have in this city, I don't see them not having someone there. Yeah, I don't know if they'd go in person. Maybe not in person, but at least a spy. One of the petals? Still, that... Uh, no, no, no. I think the petals are... Would, would stick out like a sore thumb. You gotta imagine these are ruffians. They're not... Oh. Well, then... It's gonna be easy to miss. Maybe, maybe the rose themselves. We, we maybe, should... but their patron. Definitely. Yeah. They might try to even try to contact me again. We could use that to our advantage. All right. So, with that, sorry, you want to say more, Shadrach? I was just going to say, during these 
mm -hmm. remaining days, whatever free time that I can get, especially alone time, mm -hmm. I'll spend pouring over in this order the diagrams and other papers that I have on the clockwork mechanisms okay. from the laboratory, comparing them to the timepiece itself. Mm -hmm. Then the books, the rest of the books that I still haven't gone through uh, from the laboratory, trying to find any thread or common theme amongst them, especially related to these de semi, you know, semi deities or demigods, yeah. things like that. And then the book on Timora, because I don't think I've read through the whole thing. Did I? Nope. Nope. Oh, right. So I'll in that order. Okay. Try and clean as much as I can. All right. But the timepiece and mechanical stuff it takes uh, precedence over everything else. Okay. And and also, yeah, when we have, we're going to have some time, right? Yeah, you have about a day and a half or uh, roughly two days in I, total. What I'll do is after we discuss whatever we need to discuss is go to look for a temple of tier. If there okay. are any. Okay. And what do you want to try to do? I, there? I just want to go and uh, and pray and think because I am okay. I am conflicted right now with that. Okay. Well, send me a bit uh, of information later on, like what you pray to tier two, and we'll yeah. see uh, uh, how that goes. Um, and Barnack and and Tani, is there anything that you two are doing specifically? I know Barnack maybe the archives. That's that that might be the thing you dive into. Uh, yeah, I was about to ask Tani to join me if she wants, okay. if she has nothing else to do. Mm -hmm. Two heads are better than one reading these yeah. things. All right. Well, that that will probably take up a lot of your time anyway. Yeah. Um, yeah. Between the two of you, so Barnack and Tani are going to the Freelancer Archives to find out about Barnack's grandfather's um, untimely demise, as it now seems to be. Um, yeah. All right. Very cool. Let me just write that down so I don't forget for next week. And there we go. All right, guys. That's the end of our session. Thank you so much for playing. Um, and thank you guys for watching. I really appreciate it. I really appreciate everyone who's been hanging out, everyone who raided. I'm going to send a raid on quickly to uh, to another fellow D&D streamer. But in the meantime, thank you guys so much for watching. Remember to follow if you, you haven't yet. All of us appreciate you so much. And we will see you, we will see you next week. Uh, Sunday, and I will see you probably sooner in the week because I'm going to be streaming some more D&D &D prep and things like that. So, thank you guys so much, and we'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye. And go raid. Bye. Support other streamers. Bye-bye. Nice.